In this video, I want to show you how to use the summary block in Squarespace. And to do that, I've actually jumped over to my website since we don't really have any content to use in the summary block on our current website without code. Uh, but while you're here, we're here, I also wanted to show you that this whole website uh, that I have built and everything I have going on here is actually built within Squarespace. So, um, or sorry, built within Squarespace and on the five theme. So you'll notice that even though this looks very different, I'm not using the banner image or anything like that. I have a very clean and crisp website all built right here within the Squarespace template. Uh, so it's a really cool, really robust theme. Uh, really enjoy using it. But for now, what I'm going to show you guys how to do is use the summary block. And the summary block is very cool. It's very useful for either galleries or, but the most common place that I use it, is really based around blogs. And so what I'm going to do is I have this demo page here and I'm going to add a block and I'm going to click on summary block. And what it's basically what a summary block does is it kind of creates that little kind of thumbnails, kind of a magazine style um, look for uh, seeing a handful of your recent blog posts or your most popular blog posts. So here I'm clicking on my blog and what you see is now all of these posts, my recent kind of blog posts pop up right here in kind of a summary format. Uh, if I wanted to I could also go from galleries and I can make a summary of my art gallery and you can see some of my crazy artwork here. But uh, we're going to stick with the blog because it's a little more relevant and what I think is more commonly used. Uh, you can also do a gallery of products as well if you would like. So once we've chosen what we're going to create a summary of, we're going to come over here to layout. And we can choose from a handful of different ways to lay this out. Uh, so right now what you're seeing is the grid mode, uh, very similar to the gallery grid. We can do a list and you'll see a list of everything and uh, you'll notice my recent posts don't have thumbnail photos um, but all my old ones you can see the thumbnails appear right here on the left and uh, you can make the uh, text size small if you want to you can make it extra large if you want to get a little crazy or just medium and make it kind of normal uh, your aspect ratio this determines your ratio for your pictures. If we put it on auto, then that's going to aim to not crop anything or try to crop as minimal as possible or whatever's the best fit. Or you know you can make them squares if you want to, um, or vertical or whatever whatever fits your fancy and that you like for your site. I'm going to leave this on auto for now. I can choose the image size and if I want make the image really big. Whoa, it's tweaking out right here. Uh, but uh, you can see I can make the image really big with the story to the side of it. Or I can come down here and make the image small and make the text take up a majority of the screen. Uh, again, whatever you prefer. You want your image aligned to the left or you can set the image to the right. And text align you can make it left, center, or right. Uh, so again, very cool features there. Uh, metadata positions. Um, we so that would be the date right there, and uh, I can show you how you can actually change that. I can put the metadata above the title. So now you see the date just popped above our title. We can make it right below the title, and the date pops right there or below the content altogether. And then I'm going to come over here to display. I can choose how many items I want to display. I can display up to 30. So now we have a ton of blog posts going way back that it shows. Or if I wanted to, I could limit that to my latest three. Oof, kind of tweaks a little bit when I make those big changes. And there you just see the recent ones that I have. Oh, it's actually showing five. Hmm, that is odd. Ah, that must have just been a glitch from trying to do it so much. But there we go. Now we're at three. 
Um, you can choose what information you want to display, the title, uh, the, if you wanted this thumbnail, which again I'll show you where this thumbnail is pulled from later in the blogging section. Um, so I can just have titles if I want to. Oh, thumbnail, sorry, that would be, uh, let me make this a little bigger. Thumbnail would again be the pictures. So now the pictures are gone. And then the excerpt is the text. So we can just have the titles and the text if we want. And then you can also choose what you want this metadata to be. So right now you see that the metadata is the date of the post. Uh, I could also make it the tags that are on the post. I can make it the author of the post. Um, location, comments, any, any of this kind of stuff. So um, again, some customization around there and you can have a second piece of data as well. So I could have my date plus the name of the author. And you can also filter by categories. So for instance, I have quite a few um, categories on my website. And so if I just do, um, let's see, the focused creator, that's just going to pull anything that I've tagged on the focused creator, which is a handful of blog posts that were kind of featured around this ebook that I released. Or I can come down here and do that same filtering with tags. And I can put in a tag of freelance. And here I get this kind of one post that I've actually tagged freelance on. Uh, and so you can use categories and filters, which I will show you how to add those later on in the blogging section as well. Uh, I can take those off. And then last, there's a feature also in blogging where you can set a certain, um, certain posts as featured posts. So if I click that, you can actually begin to see kind of these featured most popular posts that I have chosen are uh, to be featured. And we can turn that off and again by default it will just choose your most recent posts. So again you can see the summary block is very robust and honestly we're just getting started um, because there's even more cool things I'm about to show you. Uh, you saw that basically everything I just showed you was on the list format but and let's go back up to grid and what we'll notice is that if we go to grid all of these different things changes so we can now change our column width again and we can make our width um, you know two columns wide try to make it a bunch of columns wide where it's really dense that's probably not looking too good uh, but you can kind of really mess around with this and you can change the gutter which is the spacing in between make it so there's hardly any space and these words bump right up. That's again, doesn't look very good, but you're getting the idea of what you can do with it. And uh, again, you have all the same text alignment, metadata, and display, and let me just tweak in here while I'm messing with all these settings. And then again, right here, you can choose all those same options and everything right here. Maybe we don't want the grid or the list. Well, here's another cool one, carousel. And what the carousel does is, is kind of a, a cool thing where you can actually kind of move this, yeah. You can see these little arrows that scroll through. Uh, well, I can say here are my featured posts. And again, have all these same things. I can choose how many items I want in a row. So we'll say four. And then for the sake of having ones with images, I'm gonna go to featured. And a really cool thing, once you have this, uh, we'll hit save just so I can demonstrate this for you guys. Uh, with the featured post, you actually have these little arrows, and it's, uh, or sorry, with the carousel option. And you can start to scroll through and have this really cool kind of magazine thing. Just like that, no code or anything, you just get to make cool little features like that with using their built-in widgets. Um, so again, those are kind of the main ones right there. And I'm going to double click on our summary block, come back in here, and show you guys the final one, auto columns. Which, this one's again cool, it kind of creates this neat magazine layout. Uh, and I think this one kind of works better without the excerpt. Let's take the excerpt out. And um, let's also take off the featured filter, and I think you're going to get to see a little more. Oh, we'll make it a little bigger, put a bunch of posts in here. So like 30 of these guys. And we'll give this a second to load. But this auto columns, what it does is it kind of creates 
these columns automatically just based off the height of the image, the amount of text and everything there. And this is again another very cool kind of layout, very magazine style, uh, but it's something you can generate really quickly on your own. And again, I can make these columns a little smaller if I want. Um, again, it probably doesn't look good, that good with all that text, but maybe with pictures it might work. Uh, I can make the gutter width bigger or smaller. Um, and just kind of mess around with all these settings. So it's uh, a really cool feature. Again, not doing it justice right now with what it can really do. But um, again, it's a really nice one, very cool way to lay out your content. Uh, and so the summary block is really, really powerful tool in Squarespace, especially if you're blogging, podcasting, putting out any sort of regular content. It kind of lets you get a little bit customized around how you actually put your content on your website. Uh, so really powerful, really robust, probably one of my favorite tools within all of Squarespace. So highly recommend checking it out and playing with it. I think you will really enjoy this tool.